Welcome to our tutorial about what's been recorded. First of all, the actual macro we recorded is simply the VBA program interacting with CATIA's API, or Application Programming Interface. Basically, when a macro makes a call, it accesses CATIA's API functions. The function is executed, and the macro accesses the next function on the list. For every action you take, CATIA's API has a corresponding function which is called up by any macro that you create. Let's take a closer look at some code to see what I'm talking about. We're going to open the macro file that we created in the VBA editor, and let's take a closer look at the code. Tools, Macro, Visual Basic Editor. Here is Module 2. Our first line is the entry point to the CATIA application. The next line, that's where the program gets the active CATIA document. As you see, the syntax when reviewed line by line like this does appear comprehensible, even obvious. Here, part 1 was declared as a part. Then part 1 is set as a part in part document 1, which is of course the active document. Subsequently, CATIA sets body 1 as a part body, as we see here. And back to our editor. If I change the syntax here, for example, what will happen now is that every time CATIA executes this macro, we'll end up with a new part body created. Let's get back to our editor. We'll scroll down in our code to see where the sketch and the pad were created. Here's the create closed circle function. It's got three arguments. The first two arguments comprise the coordinates or position of the center. The last argument is the radius of the circle. If I scroll further down, here's where the pad is created with a depth of 20 millimeters. If you want to understand what each particular function in this code does, you can simply copy the function and then look it up in the CATIA help file. And this concludes our tutorial about what's been recorded with your macro.